Well, let's talk about the definition of a victim. You know, I mean, if if I approached somebody listening to this show and I'd say, what's wrong with you? And oh, I'm in a bad mood today. Well, why are you in a bad mood? Well, because of my coworker, because of my staff, because of my stats, because of the news, because of my ex. What they're really saying is unconsciously now in a program that something outside of me, some person or circumstance is controlling the way I feel and the way I think. And anything that's controlling the way you feel and think makes you victim to your environment. Now, that unconscious program then means that a person who's living by that every day will be more susceptible to any condition in their environment because it's their response to the environment that is squandering the amount of energy they need to heal. <laughs> so then, so then, in order for them to heal, then they have to turn the battleship around and say, "Well, wait a second. I could complain. That would be normal and natural. I have a thousand reasons to be unhappy. But instead of allowing my environment to control how I think and feel, what if how I think and feel can produce an effect in my environment? Now, now, all of a sudden, the game changes because you are going to inhibit." Of those thoughts, behaviors, and emotions, and in the moment where whether it's justified or valid or not, for you to be angry, frustrated, fearful, sad, pain, in pain, whatever, to no longer allow your environment to control it, and you begin to self-regulate, and that's adaptability. And we teach people that you could actually develop the skill, and when you do it properly, and you get back into that kind of heart and brain coherence,、uh, you save yourself. From going unconscious for the remainder of the day and running some type of program, so it feels unnatural in the beginning because basically the hardest part about change is not making the same choice as you did before. And the moment you decide to make a different choice, buckle up because it's going to feel uncomfortable. It's going to feel unfamiliar. You are going to leave known territory, and you're stepping into the unknown. Now, most people, their habituations. And their conditioning of remembering something from the past, and that memory is just、uh, thoughts of different people and circumstances, of different things at certain times and places, tattooed in the recesses of their gray matter. So the moment they think of the problems, they're thinking in the past. But every every one of those past experiences has an emotion associated with it. So they start off in the morning thinking about the problems.、And、the moment they feel unhappy, now their body's in the past because thoughts are the language of the brain and feelings are the language of the body. And it's that feeling then that drives their thoughts, that produces more of the feeling. And their state of being is literally in the past. So the moment you decide to make a different choice, you're stepping out of known territory because that conditioning process is conditioning the body to subconsciously. Become the mind of that emotion, and now the body's literally in the past. So when you step out into the unknown, and now game is on because you're going to hear the voices, and you're going to hear the chatter, and you're going to hear the sub vocalizations for one reason, because the body emotionally is trying to convince you to think consistent with that emotion. So you make the same choice, you demonstrate the same behavior, you create the same experience to reaffirm that same emotion. Then people say, "Well, this feels right." No, that feels familiar. So going from the old self to the new self, there is a neurological, biological, chemical, hormonal, genetic death of the old self, and and crossing that river of change from the old self to the new self is what we admire about great people, whether it's Michael Jordan or William Wallace or Mahatma Gandhi or or、uh, Dee Dee Palmer. I mean, they just took a chance in possibility. Some people would rather cling. To suffering and to unhappiness, than to take a chance in the unknown. So then, stress then becomes the one thing that people rely on in their outer environment for an arousal, <laughs> and the arousal of fear, the arousal of aggression, the arousal of anger, the arousal of pain, is really taking the body's energy and mobilizing it for some threat in the outer environment, real or imagined. Well, short term, no problem there. But if you turn on the stress response and you can't turn it off, now you're headed for a disease. Because、right. no organism can live in emergency mode for that extended period of time. So what's the side effect? From a neurological standpoint, you are going to see a lot of incoherence in the thinking neocortex. In fact, the arousal. Causes a person to try to predict the future based on the past. So now they're overly analytical, and our research shows when you get overly analytical, one hundred percent of the time, you're going to make your brain worse, without a doubt.、Wow. You're going to drive it further into those elevated high beta states. Same thing happens. You're sitting in traffic, and you're frustrated. You're impatient. You can't run. You can't fight. Fight. You can't hide. So in a sense, biologically, you're stepping on the gas in the brain. But what happens to the heart? Doing the sympathetic response, it's beating. But now you're not using that energy. 
So then the arteries of the heart constrict and now, now you're pushing against the closed system and the heart becomes incoherent and the energy literally leaves the brain and heart. And now, in a sense, the, the hormones of stress draw from our field of energy and turn it into chemistry. We become more matter, less energy, more particle, less wave. And now we feel separate from everyone and everything because those chemicals heighten the senses to narrow our focus on everything material, we become materialists. So then there's no time to dream in survival. Why would you dream? It's not a time to dream. It's not a time to create. So people spend 70 plus percent of their time living in this aroused state. And so they don't believe in a new future because if they can't see it, smell it, taste it, hear it, feel it, it doesn't exist. So then suppressed neocortical function, consciousness drops right out of the thinking neocortex. And the act of slowing down your brain waves all of a sudden causes different compartments of your brain that were incoherent because the hormones of stress are saying, what about this, what about that, what about this person, what about that appointment? You start suppressing neocortical function. Here comes innate intelligence. Here comes the autonomic nervous system. And now they begin to merge. And the autonomic nervous system's job is to do what? Create balance. So it says, this person is getting beyond their identity. And when the autonomic nervous system moves in, the brain neocortex starts to synchronize. And what sinks in the brain starts to link in the brain. And now, what we see is the autonomic nervous system, when it's done properly, it turns on, Ron, to such a heightened degree of energy. We're talking 200, 300, 400, 500 standard deviations outside of normal. That's how much energy is in there. And I'll give you an example about standard deviations. If we took everybody on who's listening to this call and we measured their eyesight, as an example, you would see that Z curve exactly the same. No matter what we measured, whether intelligence, eyesight, height, weight, you'd see the same curve. And the, that big part of the curve, if you draw a line right down the middle, that's normal. That makes up about 68% of the population, a little better eyesight, a little worse eyesight, but it's kind of normal. Then the curve drops down and you have about 12% here, 12% here, a little better eyesight, a little worse eyesight. Then that gets down to the bottom. And you got 2% really great eyesight, 2% really poor eyesight. That makes up 99.7% of the population is either three standard deviations above normal or three standard deviations below normal, no matter what we measure. Now, we're getting brainwave patterns with energy in an aroused state of gamma. That's 200, 300, 400, 500 times outside of normal. Now, when neuroscientists and, and researchers look at this, and it's all autonomic nervous system. So now the autonomic nervous system is processing a very coherent, <laughs> very orderly, very high frequency. And the autonomic nervous system controls and coordinates all those systems. So the person, all of a sudden, the arousal that they're feeling is an arousal of ecstasy. It's an arousal of bliss. They're, 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 they're connecting with innate, and its signature is pure love. I mean, there's, or wholeness, whatever you want to call it, or, or ecstasy, a, a feeling that moves you into the present moment. Now, when that happens, it's, the feeling's not coming from anything outside of them. It's, it's coming from within them. And they stop looking out there for it. And they start realizing that innate intelligence is real within them. So then when they start becoming conscious and interfacing with it, the side effect of that many times is an instantaneous biological upgrade. The person all of a sudden, why? Because that orderly signal, coherent signal that's being sent to every single cell in the body is jiggling the cell with energy and the cell begins to eliminate, uh, emit more light and information. And now all of a sudden, the body begins to produce a field. And according to the quantum model of reality, all disease is a lowering of frequency. You're becoming more matter, less energy. So now here we go, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, an, an upgrade energetically that happens in real time. And so the person comes back and says, I don't know what that was, but might me tell you something, it was more real than the betrayal I had six years ago or more real than the trauma I had when I was nine. This is, this is, an, a, moment, this is a moment where they're having a very, very profound uh, re, uh, removal of the past biologically.